Welcome back, everybody. Hope everybody had a good holiday, Christmas, and New Year's, and hope everybody's well. I uh, apologize. My voice is a little raspy today. I've, uh, <laughs> I'm not under the weather yet. I'm fighting the crud that's been going around here a little bit. I uh, thought that we'd take a look at uh, the upcoming project. I was deciding what to do and what not to do, so I drug this off the shelf and I uh, thought it might be a fun project. I have no idea what we're going to get into here. <laughs> so, anyway, this is a Philco 54C, 54 Charlie. Now, this was made around 1935. Uh, there was uh, the early models, they come out in 33, and they had a wood front and had vertical bars on the, uh, on the speaker. Uh, then in the middle uh, versions of this, about 1934, it was similar, but it had a faux finish on it. And it had some burl patterns on it. And the late model, which is a 1935 Charlie, uh, it had a wood front with a wave pattern at the top. Uh, so when this came out new, this was, uh, the C is for compact, I believe. And uh, it was it cost originally about $29.95 new. And it was called a peewee or a cigar box. Uh, it was a mantle radio is what it was. Um, so it weighs slightly over 11 pounds, and uh, that's about five kilograms for my people overseas. Uh, and it measures 14 inches, uh, almost 14 inches, uh, 8.7 inches, and the depth of it is five inches. And in millimeters, that's 335 millimeters. Uh, it's 220 millimeters and 130 millimeters. It's a five tube super heterodyne. Um, and the tube complement, it has a rectifier or 25Z5. Uh, it starts out the chain uh, from the antenna is 6A7 mixer oscillator. Then it goes into the IF amplifier, uh, which is a, a, a number 78 tube. Then it goes into the second detector, the AVC first AF tube, which is a, a 75 tube. And then the power output is a, a 43. Uh, it covers the broadcast band, which is from 550 kilohertz to 1500 kilohertz. And it has one short wave of 1.5 megahertz to 3.2 megahertz or megacycles. Let's take a look in the back of it. You can see the cabinet. The cabinet does have some issues on the very top. And the knob just fell off. But some of the substrate in this vent, this is a vent. Uh, and I'll show you why it's got a vent in it here shortly. Uh, but uh, some of the substrate has, is gone. And we'll, and you may be able to see right in here some of the substrate itself is gone but the veneer all the veneer is here uh, and some of the veneer has been stuck back down to the substrate I don't know if, uh, what has happened or uh, if somebody's tried to repair it but um, hopefully we're going to be able to repair this substrate and keep this veneer if not then we'll re-veneer the whole top of it okay but uh, it's a nice looking front on this. Keep the glare off of it, maybe. Uh, but uh, the these dials are you can buy them. Uh, the knobs they look original, but for some reason this one's not fitting well, and I believe this may have been changed out, and it doesn't fit the the, the knob correctly. Let's go ahead and pull that off and get that out of the way. But let's look in the back real quick. Uh, some more cabinet issues here. Uh, some veneer loose. That's not anything. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't 
pay no attention to the man behind the curtain there. Uh, but uh, got an antenna wire that drops out the back and the power cord. Now this originally had a back on it um, and similar to a television uh, had uh, holes in it for vents. Um, here's the capacitors, the filter capacitors and those look original. Now they may have been replaced underneath here. Who knows? Who knows? But these are power resistors uh, and I would think these probably get fairly warm and that's the reason it had a back on it. The back also had an interlock so that if you pull the back off this would not work. It did not come up and come with a back so there we go. Uh, here's the switch in the back that switches the uh, the bands. And that just sounds like an on-off switch to me. Uh, how that works, I, I don't know. We'll figure that out as we go. But it's pretty jammed pack in there, if you can see. Looks like all the tubes are here. Uh, person I bought this from says it works, but poorly. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. So, don't know whether to plug it up or just go ahead and tear into it. Let's go ahead and, and take this out of the cabinet and take a look underneath. Okay, as usual, at least one screw missing. Yeah. Fortunately, the knobs are here. Quarter inch screws on the bottom with washers. Look like uh, the holes are worn out pretty good. Looks like somebody may have been in here several times. Don't know. We will see. There's not much to get a hold of. Well. Okay, let's set this to the side. See what this looks like inside. Uh, cardboard front. Grill cloth. Doesn't look that bad. But, uh, all right. Maybe you can see this substrate issue we have now. Let's see if I can get a light on it. I think you can see pretty good in there now. We'll have to figure out how to address that, and that's cracked, of course. All right, let's see. Okay, did a little bit of studying. This is a filter choke here. It's supposed to have a pencil to point, I think I've been told. Filter choke, output transformer, local oscillator. Down here, this is the first IF, the adjustments, and the second IFs. Uh, output tube, I believe, rectifier, and we'll identify these tubes as we, as we pull them out. You'll see back in there the speaker and the uh, field coil. Tuning condenser, let's look under the bottom here. Pretty compact. <laughs> okay. The IFs, it's kind of strange. Uh, these are just tuning capacitors on the back of the chassis. And here are the coils, shielded coils mounted. That's a little different. Here's a capacitor that has been there since I don't know when. And of course the filter capacitors are back over here. And I'm trying to see if they have been bypassed or taken out, but they look original. So 
other than the power cord I'm not sure someone might have put that one in in the past that doesn't look original but uh, all right should we fire it up I'm, I'm, I'm hearing y'all scream no 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 others are saying yeah go for it I don't know oh yeah <laughs> I failed to mention look at this speaker is there some of that flucy red uh, fingernail polish someone used in the past not sure if we can repair this or not but we will see as time goes on as we tear into this thing remember it's okay okay let's go for this let's turn this on now I bought it it said it worked I want to see if it works all right we're gonna bring it up uh, there's about 50 volts current looks okay uh, I don't know if you can see it or not slight um, illumination of the bulb 200 milliamps let's go on up about 100 volts current still looking pretty good about 300 milliamps let's go up to 110 Uh, let's see as it's warming up current eh, 400 milliamps I don't hear I hear a little bit of hum washers going on in the washroom next door let's tune it and see if we can find anything Let me close this door. Okay. We're expecting a little winter weather here. I hear a little something there. Well, it plays, but not very well, I said. Well, there's three stations. Getting three stations. <laughs> All right. Okay, I believe uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. Still pulling slightly over 400 milliamps, which is about normal for this. We'll turn it off, and we'll explore the circuitry next time and tear into the bottom and see what, uh, what else we're going to end up doing to this as far as um, <laughs> I can see a finger went through that somewhat sometime or the other. But uh, how hot did those get? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. But okay. That's it for now, guys. Let me know what you think of this, this uh, project. From Larry from the Hills of Tennessee. Thanks for watching. No animals were harmed during the making of this video. Well, maybe one.